Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to undervolt and optimize the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D on any motherboard, but today I will be using my Asus ROG Strix X870i. This is inside a really tight ITX build with only a 240mm AIO, so we need to make the CPU run cooler, quieter, and more stable, without sacrificing performance. One really important note before we start, after every single change you make, you should test your system for stability. That way, if something breaks, you'll know exactly what setting caused it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and head into the BIOS. First things first, enable AMD Expo under AI Tweaker. This sets your DDR5 kit to run at its full rated speed. For me, that's 6,000 mega transfers per second at CL30. Why? Ryzen 7000 and 9000 CPUs love fast, low latency memory. It helps boost gaming performance, especially on the X3D models. After you apply Expo, reboot and run a memory stability test like Carhu, TM5, or just a few hours of gaming, make sure your RAM is stable before moving on. Once we know our memory is stable, let's go ahead and turn on PBO, or Precision Boost Overdrive. We're going to change this from Auto to Manual, and set the PBT to 175, the TDC to 130, and EDC to 185. By default, the motherboard lets the CPU pull a ton of power, which just generates unnecessary heat in a small case like the T1. These slightly reduced limits keeps temps in check, but don't hurt gaming performance. Again, once you apply this, reboot and test for stability and make sure everything's okay. Still under the PBO, set the thermal limit to 85 degrees. This is something that I personally like to do. It acts as a safety ceiling. The CPU will boost as high as it can, but if it ever hits 85 degrees Celsius, it won't go higher. In an ITX case with limited cooling, this keeps temps safe and boost consistent. And now for the most impactful change, the curve optimizer. To keep it simple for you guys, I recommend starting with a negative curve offset at 10. Test with 10, if it's stable, you can go ahead and push it a little bit further. Most shifts should be stable at around negative 20. Uh, if not, dial it back to 15 and keep testing. I was personally able to push my chip all the way to negative 35 with passing every single stress test that I could throw at it. However, it would end up freezing after a long gaming session, after I would close the game and just sit idle for a little bit, the entire system would just freeze and I'd have to restart it manually. So I dialed it back and did a per CCD curve offset. For CCD0 or the 3DV cache cores, I set it to negative 30. These cores are more sensitive and going lower can cause idle crashes. For CCD1 or the regular cores, I set it to negative 35. These are stronger silicon and can handle a deeper underbolt. You might ask, what is the curve optimizer doing? This reduces the voltage the CPU requests at any given frequency. That means lower temps, lower power draw, and quieter fans, while still maintaining boost performance. Again, it's very, very important to apply these settings, reboot, and test thoroughly. This is the change most likely to cause instability. So run every stress test you can think of, like Y-Cruncher, OCCT, or just long gaming sessions, and make sure to use your computer how you normally would do it and test for instability there. If you run into any issues, dial it back just a little bit and test again. And finally, let's go into cube fan control. This is something that I haven't personally found online or in any videos, but I figured I'd add it in for you guys that might be curious. I set my pump to run at 100% all the time. This is something that you do not need to do, but I personally like to do it. You can get away with running it at 70% according to some users that I've talked to, but 100% works for me. Now for the radiator fan curve. I have set my fans on the radiator to run at 20% at 35 degrees, 35% at 45 degrees, 55% at 55 degrees, 70% at 65 degrees, 90% at 75 degrees, and finally 100% at 80 degrees. This keeps the system nearly silent at idle, but ramps quickly under load, which is perfect for gaming where CPU temps spike and fall rapidly. With these settings, my Ryzen 9 9950X 3D now runs in the high 60s to low 70s during 4K gaming. Cinemage scores stay strong, and the system is quieter and more consistent than stock. And remember, I tested every single change. That's the best way to make sure you don't waste time chasing random crashes later. So that's pretty much it. Optimize PBO limits, a safe thermal cap, and a smart undervolt that makes this chip perfect for small form factor cooling. If you found this video helpful, drop a like and subscribe. More optimization and SFF content is on the way, so please stay tuned. I do have a full build guide that I made fully completed. I just haven't had the chance to sit down and edit it as it is quite long and I wasn't that happy with how the video came out. I'm still working on it and I have a few changes coming up in the near future that might help push this PC a little bit more. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. It's been Sprout, signing out. See ya.